for your lessons for life today, uh, Mr. Hussey has asked me to do a history of Runcorn. He's asked me to do it because like I'm the best history teacher, better than Mr. McGlory and better than Mr. Crawley and Bish Bebe. So he's asked me to do it also because I have lived in Runcorn for quite a few years of my life. So I know a little bit about the history of Runcorn. Runcorn tends to be overshadowed by Liverpool because Liverpool has such a big and interesting history that Runcorn is like this little thing that no one really cares about. But don't forget, you're growing up in Runcorn, so it's important that you understand the history of Runcorn, if that makes sense. Okay, so we're going to have a little look about Runcorn. We're going to look at where it's, how it started, uh, the different sorts of people that live here, and then some of the famous people towards the end. Okay, so this is part of your lessons for life of knowing where you come from. So, the first part of it, okay, the early days, Runcorn was founded in 915 AD. Also, at you, for your year sevens, you might have been talked about with your history teacher a thing called the Doomsday Book. Runcorn was mentioned in the Doomsday Book, and basically it was people lived in, have lived in Runcorn for years and years and years. But it was, the, if you think about it, it's in a good place because it's close to a river. So it was used to guard against Viking invasion where the Mersey came in, if that it came in, if that makes sense. Also, because of its proximity to Manchester, it was used during the Industrial Revolution to transport goods from outside of England to into England, so things such as cotton, up to Manchester. So that Bridgewater Canal that runs from the old town right the way through to um Darsbury, etc., through Murdershaw, through um uh, Windmill Hill. It was used as a transportation for goods which came in to England, okay? So it, it also has links with the ports such as Liverpool, Manchester and Staffordshire, okay? So it's a good place to bring things in and transport them around the, uh, the country. So that is the very basic early days of Runcorn of where it came from and how it started as a town. So its name comes from run corn under norman rule run corn fell under the barony of halton and if you ever go to halton castle which is up the hill that was the home of the baron of halton the last baron of halton is a guy called henry bolenbrook which our school is named after and henry bolenbrook eventually became henry the fourth of england so a wide cove or bay so it's had a few different names. So obviously, as it's come through, it hasn't always been known as Runcorn. It's been called Rumacafan, which means a wide cove or bay. Then we have a, the word is derived from the old English words for rum, which is wide or broad, and cold coffee for cave or cove. Okay, so as you can see on the right, that is the Baron of Holton. It's a different spelling, but it's the same thing. That's the Baron of Holton's coat of arms. And then early spellings, okay? If you arrive in Runcorn, this beautiful sign will, read, will speak to you and says, Welcome to Runcorn Town Centre. Okay, but obviously it hasn't always been called Runcorn as we know. It's been called Runcoven, it's been called Runconstorn, Runconhorn, and Runcorn with an E. So the spelling has changed the Runcorn over the years. So Runcorn is, is, is famous for its um, industry. Maybe not so much now, but back in the day it was. The Bridgewater Canal was first opened in 1761. I think Mr. Um, Milne was there when it was first opened. So we have Runcorn is particularly linked with things like shipbuilding, engineering, chemical manufacturing, tanning, which is making a uh, cow's skin into leather, and sandstone quarrying. So now if you uh, travel up to the sort of Western Point part of Runcorn, you will see the ICI factories. Years and years ago, they were the major dominant industry of Runcorn. Also, we have sandstone, which is in the, um, the Runcorn Hill Park. There's lots of sandstone there. So if you can quarry, which means taking the stone out, that can be sold and, and buildings can be made out of it. So Runcorn has or did have lots of industry but unfortunately, as time has gone on, then industries have stopped and the people of Runcorn have got jobs in other places. So, it was highly polluted and some might say it still is a little bit polluted, okay? Because so where I live, I live not far from the ICI. In fact, now when I travel home from work, 
I always look and think, oh, it's nice round here. But then when you look to your left, you just think, well, what's all that smoke coming out of that chimney there? Is it affecting our health, okay? So the chemicals and tanning industries, and if you know, if you ever go to witness and you cross over the bridge and it absolutely stinks, that's because they've got things like tannin uh, works there where they, I don't want, this might sound a bit horrible, but where they kill animals and they take the skins off them and they boil the animal skins up. So that smell that you can smell when you go into witness, that is associated with the tanning industries. So because Runcorn had lots of tanning industries, Runcorn would have smelled a little bit like witness. Sorry for the people who are from witness, but witness stinks, unfortunately. So 20th century industry, okay? Runcorn is not really well known for having a lot of industry in the 20th century, but chemicals were dominant in the chemical industry. And in 1926, ICI, which is the Imperial Chemical Industry, that was formed to create lots of jobs for the people of Runcorn. In ICI, they create lots of different chemicals, such as bleach, things for paint. And there's massive, and you know, if you ever go and see it, it's a massive, massive uh, plant but it would have been a lot bigger back in the early 20th century because more things were being produced there. So as you can see by the picture on the right, uh, you might you might have seen this before, but this is sort of the skyline of the ICI company. And then what happens is, unfortunately, during the second half of the 20th century, the tanneries closed and the chemical industry declined. So the people who live in what's called old run corn, so like the Western Point areas, 95% of them people who, who lived there would have worked in the ICI factory. Their dads would have worked there, their sons would have got a job there. But unfortunately, as things started to move away from the chemical industry, lots and lots of jobs in Runcorn were unfortunately lost. So all them areas, such as Western Point, were built to house the workers of the ICI plant. But as that starts to dwindle and start that people don't need chemicals or want chemicals as much, then that starts to go down. So, industry today, you can see there on the right, that picture, that is the, one of the original pictures of the shopping city or the city or the shop or whatever you want to call it. We had lots of use hang around of a Saturday and a Sunday, maybe it's, it's to you, but this is the original pictures of the shopping city. The shopping city, could be, sorry, someone was outside, because Runcorn's industry started to fall, there's lots of the shopping, but there's not as much as there used to be, if that makes sense. Other businesses currently in Runcorn, which what's, which it tends to be now, so ICT, retail, science, education, and healthcare warehouses, and distribution centres. Because when I was younger and I left school, you could get a job in the Ashmore. I don't know if you know where that is. That's to, like by Castlefield, that industrial state there. There was lots and lots of factories doing lots and lots of things. So, for instance, Zips, that you zip your pants up or you zip your jacket up, they were made by a company called YKK. YKK had a factory in Runcorn and lots of people worked in them factories. But as the demand for things like zip starts to fall, people start losing their jobs. So you can see the issues there, okay? Every single factory on the Ashmore had a business in it. So you could get a job one that weekend and then you didn't like that job, you could go and leave and you could go and join another job if, that, if that's what you wanted to do. But there's not many factories left on the Ashmore. Whereas if you travel down towards um, Darsbury and the new science centre there, because they do things like ICT and they're looking at health and looking at like space and science, that is really, really booming because not only Runcorn, but a lot of businesses have tended to switch away from the old ways of making things and towards a new thing. So Runcorn has struggled, but it's not just Runcorn, it's quite a large part of the Northwest. So as you can see there, the shopping city, the original shopping city was built in 1972 or opened in 1972. And that is nearly as old as me. It's, yeah, it is nearly as old as me. So you can see how that hasn't changed much in like the 48 years since it's been built. It's still basically the same. Anything you've changed, there's the sign on the front of it. So you can see how that or how that hasn't sort of evolved as other places have. It still looks exactly the same. So transport, okay? Runcorn has good transport links. We are close to M56 to M62. So people or businesses like to use Runcorn as a base because then they can travel onto other businesses or other places, should I say. So the only way to get across Runcorn, the, the Mersey, was there's no bridge there before the bridge was built, was by the Runcorn Ferry. 
then in 18, 1905, sorry, the bridge the to at the top that you can see on, on the left, the transporter bridge was the only link that you could get from Runcorn to Widnes. And that bridge is not like a bridge that you can travel on. You have to drive into that carriage and that carriage would take you from one end to the other. So you don't drive across the top of the bridge. It's like a little carriage that you get in and it moves from end to end. But this gives the town links to Liverpool and the rest of the country. As you can see at the bottom on the bottom picture there, people are enjoying the banks of the River Mersey and having what looks like a nice um, weekend out or something along them lines and dipping in the water. No one really does that now because it's all bordered, like, you know, fenced off. But you can see the difference between one call now and one call then, if that makes sense. Okay, don't forget this was a few years ago, but this shows how in some parts one corn has evolved. So the run bridge, okay, 1961, that bridge that you can see there on your right, a suspension bridge. It's called the Silver Ju Jubilee Bridge. Some people call it the run bridge, some people call it the run witness bridge. It's entirely up to you what you call it. But when that was built in 1961, that was one of the largest suspension bridges in Europe, because as you can see, it's suspended over two points. Um, now, the Maisie Gateway Bridge is opened in 2017. That is a really fast, efficient way to get across the River Maisie. Unfortunately for the people that live in Liverpool, like Mr. Huff, who's always moaning that he has to pay £4 a day to go back and forth to work, it's good for some people, but it's not good for other people. What that was built for was to get it easier across so it, in, it gets more industry and more business is into run corn because they can get to other parts quicker on the road and to be fair so far it has worked out pretty well because there's never any traffic jams but the bridge at the top used to always be chocker and no one could get home from work because there was always a crash and there's only one bridge but now we've got two and then as you can see on this picture here we're looking to look at how run corn is expanded in 1963, the government saw the need for housing to reduce overcrowding in Liverpool. So what happens is in Liverpool, people who lived in the city centre were pushed in or asked to move out to reduce the amount of stress on the inner cities and move to places like Halewood and Speak and Heighton and Netherley. When them places got too busy or too too many people there. They were asked if they wanted to move to Runcorn. My family was involved in this because we used to live in a place in Liverpool called Nedley. I don't know if you know it, but we used to live in a large block of flats on something like the 25th floor. So when my mum used to go shopping with me and my brother and we'd come back and she'd have loads of bags of shopping, we'd always go to get in the lift and the lift would always be broke. Also, people tended to use the stairwells as toilets. You all know what I mean by that. And it absolutely stinks. So my mum and dad had had enough and they were offered the chance to move to Brookvale. So my mum and dad took up that offer, offer and moved to Brookvale. So when we moved to Brookvale, there was like the houses were being built, but there was still like lots and lots of farmland. So the new town of Runcourt, not the old town, because that's been there for years, is what's called an overspill. It's for people who move out of, Run of Liverpool and move into Runcorn because we were promised a garden. So my mum and dad were like, wow, let's move to Runcorn. When we did, there was just fields everywhere and we felt like we were in the countryside. So obviously over time, it started to get bigger and bigger and bigger. And an example of that now is Sandy Moor, for instance, as you can see on that picture. Sandy Moor, when I, years ago, when it started to get built, was only a small selection of streets. Now it's an absolutely massive estate and they're building more and more and more and more. So you can see how Runcorn has developed from being just one little town and farmland into a big new town, if that makes sense. When we first used to live up here and all the people who live in the old town, the people who are like proper Runcornians, if you like, used to always say, oh, you scousers are moving in and you're wrecking everything. And we used to always say back to them, well, before we moved in, you never had gas or electric. So we brought something good with us. Because when we moved into Runcorn, things started to get built, like the shopping city, for instance. So, Runcorn was classed as a new town in 1964. One of the things, or some key points about Runcorn is, basically, the roads, and when people who don't live in Runcorn, so if you have family that come from, like, down south, for instance, when they come, they all say, oh, the roads are all dead mad. Once you're on them, you can't get off them. So Runcorn was designed so that buses, cars, bikes and pedestrians were never close to each other. So we've got a designated busway. So like if you, when you go to Liverpool, for instance, you don't have 
a busway. The, the buses just go on the roads with the cars. But in Runcorn, we have busways. We have lots of roads. We have bikeways. And then you'd have pathways. So pedestrians and bikes and cars never bump into each other. Also, and this is one of Mr. Milne's famous facts because he's full of them. I, I don't know what that dinosaur says. Kiratherium was found on Runcorn Hill. Basically, it was 125 feet under the tennis courts that are in Runcorn Hill Park today. So a dinosaur fossil was found in Runcorn. And these are Mr. Milne's facts because he is full of interesting facts. And the stone that from Runcorn Quarry under Runcorn Hill was used to build the New York Harbour. So there's a little bit of fancy, fancy fact for you about Runcorn. Stone was used from Runcorn to build the New York Harbour. Ooh. And then some more interesting facts. The captain of the Titanic lived in Runcorn for a short period of time. There's the guy there, Mr. Smith. Also, anti-aircraft guns were based in Runcorn to defend Liverpool from raids during the war. So because of Runcorn's positioning, what they could do is they could spot or they would try to spot um, aircraft coming in, German aircraft, and they would use the big anti-aircraft guns to take them down before Liverpool was bombed during the Blitz and during the Second World War because of Runcorn's positioning, if that makes sense. So Runcorn's part in the war was to house or to use anti-aircraft guns. And then Wig Island, and I don't know if you've ever been here, but Wig Island is, is by the old Runcorn Bridge, and Wig Island is a nice place to take your dog for a walk. On, that, on Wig Island, that was used as a mustard gas factory during the First World War. So if you don't know what mustard gas is, it's like a yellow liquid. This is the first time that they'd used this kind of gas in war. It's against the law, but they used it against the Germans. And basically what they do is drop cartridges like bombs full of mustard gas. And it would get into your eyes and burn your eyes, get into your lungs and suffocate you and kill you. But it went like a yellow cloud. So if you ever read any First World War poetry, and it, like it, you probably will do as you go through the school, you'll understand what, what it is and what it's about. Okay, So mustard gas was an important part of England winning the First World War, and that was made on Wig Island. So there's another interesting fact for you. So while you might think, oh, run corn, it's not near, it's rubbish. There is some good things associated with it, okay? And then we have the Heath Park, which is, you know, where the football fields and, and all that now, where some of you might play football at the weekend, used to be a water reservoir where they store water and pumping station, which pumps the water around the, the northwest. So there's some interesting facts. We have some famous Runcornians here, okay? We have... The, the girl who, who wrote the series of two pints of lager and a packet of crisp. It's a bit of an old one, but if you can go on to Dave or, or Gold or YouTube, you'll be able to watch it. So she's a famous Runcornian. We also have Nicola Roberts. Okay, Nicola Roberts was a girl who was in the Girls Aloud, and she come from Runcorn, and she lives somewhere around the Langdale Road area. But she is a famous Runcornian. You also have Sir William Edward Dudley OBA. I can't read that, so I can't tell you what he did. And we have uh, Kim Marsh. Kim Marsh is a, is a barmaid, I think. I don't watch Coronation Street. Uh, I think Mr. Hussey put the, this one in. But I think she's a barmaid, but she used to live in Norton Village, and she's from Runcorn. And then we have that fellow who's a bit of a comedian, uh, John Bishop. He is a famous Runcornian. He actually came to our school, and he um, is a famous... Comedian, and then there's a picture of why I why I I'm a famous Runcornian. I'll have to have a word, Mr. Hussey.